The Retirement Cafe podcast, Nestful, finding your perfect housemate when you're over 50, with Suzanne Noble. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast with me, your host, Justin King. If you're thinking about your retirement or already retired, you're in the right place. My aim is to help you plan for and live a successful and meaningful retirement. Retirement is far more than just a financial event. It's a significant life event, a major transition, which will bring with it new challenges and opportunities. So each episode contains tips, information and inspiration to help you feel more informed and confident about your retirement. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. Before we get to the episode itself, I wanted to share a message that I received from a listener near Liverpool. Wenner wrote, Hi Justin, I hope you're well. I'm a fan of your podcast. I love listening to it. It's so informative. I am a newly self-employed psychotherapist at the age of 34 and I want to plan for my retirement. Therefore, I wonder if you can recommend someone to advise me from my area, Liverpool. Many thanks for your help and thank you for the podcast. Firstly, thanks for listening to the podcast winner. I'm really glad it's proven to be helpful for you. And thank you for your question, because it's one that I'm often getting asked. With technology as it is today, we are able to work with people all over the country. So firstly, I would suggest that anyone listening, and winner, of course, who needs a second opinion on their retirement plan, book a free initial call with me. And you can do that directly by checking in my availability in my calendar by going to my website, mfpwealthmanagement.co.uk and hit the button, book a call. Good luck with your retirement planning winner and maybe I'll speak to you soon. This week, I'm really pleased to welcome back Suzanne Noble for the second week in a row. This is Suzanne's third appearance on my podcast, sharing her latest entrepreneurial idea. Over the years, she's carved out a career in a variety of different markets, which include baby slings, time-saving apps, and include television media. Suzanne's focus is now on challenging the narrative around aging and has launched a series of businesses to do just that, from the social enterprise advantages of age to start up school for seniors, which we heard about in last week's episode. Her most recent business idea is aimed again at the over 50s and is called Nestful. So she joins me to discuss Nestful today. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Suzanne. Welcome back to the Retirement Cafe podcast, Suzanne Noble. Hello, Justin. Nice to be back again. (laughs) Again, absolutely. And you've got more news, more stuff to tell me. (laughs) Um, Um, This is great. And obviously, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about Startup School for Seniors and your great program there. Um, uh, And if if you missed that episode, obviously, you can go back and listen to that. But today, we're going to talk to Suzanne about Nestful. House shares for over 50s. Where's this idea come from? Well, a few years ago, I was running, and I still run one room on Airbnb, running an Airbnb room, a couple of rooms, and was getting very, very bored and tired of all the changing of the sheets. And, you know, people I found that were staying with me were not the same sort of people as when Airbnb first started out, who were kind of curious travelers, tended to be people that wanted to, you know, be a bit friendly. And more recently, I found it was just people who just wanted a place to sleep and expected me to provide them with the optimum five-star hotel experience at a backpacker's budget, right? And I just thought, this is nonsense. I can't, this is just not working for me anymore. And then I met somebody who introduced me to someone else who said he was looking for a room. He was a guy in his fifties and without much hesitation, research, interviewing, without much of anything, really. I just kind of trusted my friend. He moved in and he took one of the rooms. And suddenly I'm living with this 53-year-old guy. I was 57. And we were kind of having this like sort of student living kind of vibe, you know. He was running a startup. I was doing stuff, eating lunch over the kitchen table. 
And I thought, wow, this is kind of, this is kind of interesting. And meanwhile, my partner was living outside London and wanted to move into London. And we, you know, had agreed we didn't want to live together. And so I said to him, why don't you try and find a house share similar to what I'm doing? Because at the, that time he had some financial challenges, which thankfully he doesn't have anymore, but he had some challenges. And when we went to look for a house share for him and he was in his, he was like 60, I realized this is impossible. You know, this is absolutely impossible. You're going on platforms, you know, like Spare Room, for instance. And it's really It's meant for much younger people traditionally. It's hard to really identify where, if there's anybody that's older, it's just, it was just, it was difficult to navigate. We went and saw a few things. We got really depressed. Then I thought, okay, clearly I'm not the only one doing this. Now my partner is doing this. So I posted on Advantages of Age, my social enterprise, who on the Facebook group, who's sharing their place with someone else, you know, younger, older, whatever. And a whole bunch of people put up their hand and said, yeah, I am. So I was like, whoa, okay, this is getting really interesting now. So I hired somebody who was a sort of anthropologist stroke market researcher. And the two of us just spent six months talking to people about what this was about for them, why, what had led them to live with people? Was it loneliness? Was it financial circumstances? Was it a mix of both? How long had they been doing it? What did they want out of it? What what, what were the challenges they faced when finding somebody? And again, through through my network, I met a guy who was running a, a flat sharing platform for younger people, for students, mainly up North. And we got to talking and I said, look, you know, he was a tech, he was a designer and tech tech person. And I said, look, do you want to work on this with me and see if there's any anything in this? And so we went on a little startup program ourselves that Y Combinator runs online. It's a really brilliant, amazing program. And we just it was six, six or seven weeks. And we just said, look, let's let's work together on this for the, on this program for six weeks. And if we don't get on, then we just call it a day. Let's see what happens. And in week seven, week six was week six. We built this really basic website and it was originally called silver sharers. And I started promoting it through my PRs through, you know, through the media and things, my backgrounds in PR got some coverage in the evening standard, hundreds of people signing up and listing their places and away we went. And then we got some fi- we got some proper equity investment about June of not this past year, but the year before June, we went on a tech for good program and got and, and raised some finance through that and realized silver was a bit of a weird name for some people. So we re- rebranded it as Nestful and rebuilt it. So it's much more sophisticated. And yeah, there we go. That's the potted history of, of Nestle. Brilliant. So, so when you hit the site, and obviously we can all go and hit the site after this, but when you hit the site, what, 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 what do you see and, and, and what can you do? So the what we felt was missing from other um, platforms, flat sharing platforms, was the ability to um, really try and get to know the, the, the people before you actually went for the viewing because you can spend so much time doing all of this then you rock up and you realize oh they're not i'm a vegetarian they're not a vegetarian or i don't want to live with a meat eater or they're you know they're they they're a night owl i'm an early riser that was that was one of the things with the with the person who's no longer living with me cuz he he moved out but you know one of the things that i didn't realize was that we had absolutely polar opposite um lifestyles in terms of I'm up super early. He doesn't go to bed till I'm practically um, waking up, you know, (laughs) like, so, so I was putting earplugs in my ears so that I wasn't disrupted by the sound of him, you know, paddling around um, upstairs when I was trying to get sleep, you know, just like stuff like that. You can just avoid so I wanted, we wanted to make that matching process a lot more efficient. And we also wanted to 
create a really safe place um, where people really couldn't use the site before um, they couldn't they they weren't able to just view properties list properties without being verified in in a in a basic way but still more than in, in other places because there's a lot of fraud on other sites people listing places that don't actually exist people giving deposits and money to people when they haven't seen a place and all, all sorts of it, it's a really kind of quite messy space so yeah we wanted to avoid all of that and um yeah so that's that's um that's part of what you can do and we have a lodging agreement as well because we found that people weren't uh weren't giving people contracts so they were they were <laughs> They were moving in. They didn't have any lodging agreement. They didn't have any contracts. It was all kind of word of mouth, very casual because, you know, everybody's like, oh, but you seem really nice. Well, yeah, you you might be really nice, but sometimes things happen where one or the other of you has to leave. And then you have to have a process in place for that to happen in a, in a, in an amicable and efficient way, right? So, yeah. so some of that stuff we just wanted to smooth out the rough edges, um, and that's what we do. Brilliant, brilliant. So, of course, you, you're appealing to people who want to rent a room at, and you're appealing to people who are looking for a room to rent. Yeah, so we get about four or five times as many people looking as have rooms. So yeah. it's still it's still a bit of a behavior nudge with people who have not like me been an Airbnb host or not had lodgers or people living with them for a while, there is still a bit of a, there's still a, a, a bit of a hurdle, if you like, to people who think, oh, you know, how do I know that I can trust them? Um, Especially because they are older, you know, so they do have issues around, around trust and around making sure that the person who moves in is, is a is a decent person, yeah, whatever that absolutely. means. <laughs> absolutely. And so um, what are the advantages, do you think, uh, for, I mean, obviously you've done it. So if people haven't rented out a room, um, what do you think of the, you know, the advantages that you you experience by uh, suddenly thinking, yeah, well, you know what, that, that might be an idea to, to bring in some extra revenue? Well, I mean, the main, the main, reason why people do it and primarily the people that that rent out rooms are women and being in the area that you are it won't surprise you to know that women don't have the same pensions pots as men older women um it's about a hundred thousand pounds less than men have so for older women there is a financial necessity and a requirement to try and see what kind of passive income they can generate and this is one way of doing that and i know for me you know, part of my enthusiasm for creating businesses is around the fact that I know that initially it might not be delivering enough revenue to keep me, you know, to keep me in the life that I would like to lead. And so renting out a room in my in my flat is one way of knowing that that money's in the bank and I can go off and do things that I would like to pursue. Um, so, so, Financial reasons is the main reason for, and actually it's for both sides because most people share because they don't have the ability to rent on their own. Um, and then there is, you know, there are issues around loneliness and around people wanting company and companionship. Um, and then we do have some people who are more in, I would say, end of life, later life, who perhaps are willing to um, reduce the rent in exchange for some sort of service. So it could be doing a bit of shopping or a bit of cleaning, or again, a certain number of hours a week of cooking, or you know, something where they're not capable anymore of doing those things, or they could just use some help and support. But they're not they're not ready for a carer. Um, they're not looking for anyone to do anything intimate. They're just they're just seeking somebody to do some of the basics around the house. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I think it's a brilliant initiative, and I can see how it works on so many, so many levels. Um, so, where do where do our listeners uh, find out more about Nestful? So, Nestful is N E S T F U L, not two L's. Dot I O. So, don't type in dot com because you won't get anything. And um, Nestful N E S T F U L dot I O. 
Um, and my email is Suzanne at Nestle.io. Fantastic. Well, I um, highly recommend if people are interested to get in contact with you to have a look at the website to see whether it's uh, whether it's for them or not. And um, and uh, and obviously you can reach out to you if you've got any if, any questions. So once again, Suzanne, thank you for your uh, wonderful entrepreneurship around <laughs> aging and uh, and, and uh, allowing us to do all these uh, these wonderful things. So uh, thank you again for your time. Thank you, Justin. Thanks once again to Suzanne Noble for chatting to me today about her latest groundbreaking venture. To find out more about Nestful, head over to the show notes on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk, where you'll find some useful links, including a link to our previous conversation here on the podcast. As ever, if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and be sure to subscribe either on our website or on your preferred podcast player so you never miss an episode. As well as the podcast, I have a whole series of videos to help you plan for and live a successful retirement on my YouTube channel. So if you head over to YouTube and search for Justin King MFP. So until next time, I'm Justin King, helping you feel more informed in your retirement.